From a story all about love to one where there's very little love lost, the widowed Casablanca and Kaiser Chiefs match in the CAF Champions League was rescheduled after Moroccan officials refused to issue visas over Amakosi over fears of COVID-19. And we now dig a little deeper into that debacle which uh, played out um, and which delayed that uh, Chiefs debut in the group stages of the competition. And joining me are Nuhu Adams, African football journalist, uh, Elasto Kapoeza, who is a football um, analyst and uh, obviously covering uh, African football. And it's absolutely a pleasure to have both of you gentlemen. And I know, uh, Elasto, that uh, you are based uh, in uh, South Africa and uh, obviously um, hail from Zimbabwe originally. And yourself, Nuhu, based in Ghana at the moment, writing for, amongst others, modern Ghana. And maybe, Nuhu, if I may, start with you just to give our local audience um, an understanding of just how important the CAF Champions League is throughout the continent. We haven't seen a lot of success locally, and maybe we don't put it on as much of a pedestal. How big is this tournament um, in real terms for teams around the continent? Well, um, the CAF Champions League um, has become a prestige tournament or a prestige competition for most teams in Africa. Um, the North African teams are not playing it because there are money or there, there is some lucrative money in it. They are playing because when they get prestige and pride, they, they get um, sponsorships and then get other benefits from it. So you can see an Ali spending huge sums of money to sign players just to make sure they win the CAF Champions League. As far as for team, the team is with that athletic club and then um, other clubs too are doing the same. TP Mazembe, is also making sure they get the best of qualities just to make sure they, they win it. In recent times, South African teams were not taking the CAF competitions very serious. Until recently, Mamelodi now started taking the CAF competition seriously. And then all of a sudden, Mamelodi Sundowns is known worldwide because they've been dominating in the CAF Champions League. In 2016, they won it. Since then, they've been very, very consistent in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. That is why Kaiser Chiefs had to take the cup game seriously. If you come, if you go to, if you come to South Africa today, we all know Kaiser Chiefs is one of the most supported teams in the country. But on the continent, they are they are not well known. But for them to be competing in Cup Champions League consistently, for them to be competing in Cup Convention Cup consistently, they will be known in Africa and worldwide. And that's the prestige and pride in the CAF Champions League and CAF Confederation Cup. So I think um, it is now a competition. Most teams are taking it very, very seriously, and that's very positive. That's very positive for them and the competition. Yeah, and I think uh, it does bear mentioning that uh, Widad uh, FC is one of the biggest clubs on the continent, uh, probably one of the most um, popular and well-known clubs uh, in Morocco. Uh, and I think uh, it uh, probably bears mentioning, Elasto, that for Kaiser Chiefs, and it's something that uh, Nuhu alluded to, it's incredibly important that they start to make their footprint um, uh, felt across the continent. We've seen what's happened uh, with the Lando Pirates and obviously more recently and even more successfully with Mamelodi Sundowns Chiefs. This is an important competition for them to finally uh, get involved in and to do well in. Uh, uh, good evening, Cole, and good evening as well to the viewers. Uh, definitely, uh, it's a lucrative tournament. Uh, any big guns, any side with ambition of Kaiser Chiefs would want to do well uh, in this competition. Uh, so many benefits uh, for any side uh, to do well uh, we've seen uh, even uh, in the FIFA Club World Cup where uh, former Mamelodi Sundowns coach, now leading our uh, you know, playing at that platform. And that's what it brings this tournament. When you win it, you end up playing in such a prestige tournament as the FIFA Club World Cup. So yeah, any club that sets itself to play uh, in the Cup Champions League would want to dwell. Kaiser Chiefs, you might say their form uh, on the domestic scene not the best, uh, and they might look and say, look, let's see how far we can go mm. as far as continental football is concerned. Yeah, everything to play for, but of course, facing the big guns, the likes of Wydad, Casablanca, 2018 former champions, of course.
So, Elasto, are you surprised at this decision taken by White at Casablanca not allowing Kaiser Chiefs to go in? I think everybody knows around the footballing world that it is a COVID-19 year. Everybody has to make a plan, whether that's uh, to be in a biosecure environment uh, in the lead-up. Were you surprised by the decision? A bit surprised, yes. Uh, at times, you would have thought that football would be allowed you know, to, to proceed without any hindrances. Uh, but yes, uh, there are different rules, uh, different uh, uh, guidelines, restrictions that are all over the continent of Africa. And I think that is one problem, Tola, when you look at African football, uh, what happens in other parts of the, of the continent doesn't necessarily happen on the other side. And at times we are always on, a diff on different pages and it becomes so difficult to manage a competition like CAF with or without uh, COVID. But now we do have the COVID. Uh, regulations that have put in place and governments, of course, are coming up with all these rules and it becomes difficult for football clubs to go against that. So yes, uh, the Moroccan authorities uh, have made it clear that uh, traveling to and from South Africa is not allowed. Uh, so now what happens when a football club wants to come and play? So, but you would have thought that maybe certain things could be required, uh, of which that is the argument that Kaiser Chiefs put uh, up front that look with a kind of really uh, gone through all the requirements and we feel that we've uh, uh, done all what is required for us to enter Morocco, but uh, it wasn't to be. Uh, but hopefully, yes, now the game being changed and now going to be played in a different uh, territory in Egypt that now football could actually continue. Well, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to discuss all of it, Nuhu, but uh, at the moment, it seems as though the Egyptian Football Federation have stepped in and the match is going to be played um, on neutral territory in Egypt. Is this what we should be looking for in future? Should we not be working together a lot more closely from an administrative point of view in African football, especially, Nuhu, uh, Nuhu given the challenges we faced last year and this year? Well, um, it was expected. Um... The only problem here is that the Morocco authorities failed to communicate very early to CAF for CAF to take a decision on this. Um, there, there, is a, there is a similar situation in Algeria today. Um, uh, you know, Mamelodi Sanders will be traveling to Algeria to play CR Bell's dad. They, they communicated very early to CAF and a decision has been taken. But Morocco authorities waited for 72 hours before they came. Um, that's where they, they communicated to CAF. So CAF had very limited time to take a decision. But I think um, the decision now is a welcoming one. Yes. The game is to be played in Egypt on Friday. And with that, Athletic Club would take care of the organiz organizational cost, the visas and the traveling of casualties from South Africa to Egypt. So that's that's a fair deal for with that Athletic Club. We want fair play in the game. So it is appropriate that the two teams face each other on Friday and see who becomes the winner. I think right. it is positive for football. It is positive for the two teams too. It certainly is. And I think we'll wrap it up there. We don't have too much time. I thank you both gentlemen and uh, we'll keep a close eye uh, on the developments uh, in the CAF Champions uh, Football League.